Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've made a couple of videos in the past on this neat little receiver, which is based on an SI4732 and an ESP module. Now the reason that this has been so popular is due to its size and its extremely cheap cost. Now as time goes on, tinkerers and software developers find ways of making these devices better, not only by making hardware modifications, but also designing new firmware. So in this video, I'll show you how to upgrade your SI4732 receiver to either the latest firmware or even an alternative firmware. I'll show you a couple of alternative firmware versions in this video. And if you know of any others, then please let us know down in the comments section below. So first, we just need to plug a USB cable between the receiver and the computer. In this video, I'll show you how to use a web-based serial flasher, which should work on any OS with a Chromium based browser. We will need to know the COM port number once the receiver is plugged in and powered on. Now within Windows, you can view this within Device Manager. So the first firmware we'll load will be from this GitHub page. First, we need to download the firmware files and then just uncompress them into their own folder like this. Then just head over to this web page. Now I'll leave a link to this below so it's easy for you to find. Now this is a web-based ESP module flashing tool. So first we press the connect button and then select the device from the pop-up shown here. You choose one which matches the COM port that appeared when you plugged the device into your computer. Then we need to select three of the available firmware files. So click on choose file and then select the file from your downloaded firmware folder with the file name ending bootloader.bin. Now you will also need to change the flash address located in the box here. I'll change this to 0x0 and then press add file again to add the next file. So this time we'll select the file ending in partitions.bin and then change the flash address to 0x8000. Now we can select the last file by pressing choose file again and then select the file that ends in ino.bin. And this time we'll change the flash address to 0x10,000. Now, once these files have been selected, you can now press the program button. You'll start to see the web flasher send the firmware files to the receiver. Now, only disconnect the cable or power cycle the receiver once you see the words hard resetting via RTS pin at the bottom. So, if we head over to the device now and power it on, you can go to the settings page and then the about page within the menu and just check the firmware version. And as you can see here now, we have the latest firmware version for this repository installed on the receiver. Now I'm not gonna go into specific changes for each of these firmware versions. This video is more to help you understand how to upload new firmware to the receiver. You can view the change logs on any of the GitHub pages for each firmware for more information about that specific firmware version. Now, just one note regarding the firmware upload we just performed and that specific repository is that it also contains a merge.bin file. Now, if the firmware download contains a file ending in merge.bin, then you can just load a single file to the receiver instead of installing all those three files. Now, if you want to perform an upload of just one file, then you still need to enter a single flash address of 0x0 and then press the program button. Now, if your downloaded firmware doesn't have that merged file, then you will need to upload the three files that I showed you a moment ago. So let's take a look at how we can upload another firmware version from a different developer this time. Now on the GAPTN GitHub repository, you can go ahead and download the latest firmware release. Again, this will download a .zip archive and you'll need to uncompress that archive. Now the upload process with this firmware is exactly the same as the process we just performed at the start of the video. So again, with the web flasher, add the files as before. The file ending bootloader.bin must have a flash address of 0x0. A file ending with partitions.bin must have a flash address of 0x8000. And then the file ending with ino.bin must have a flash address of 0x10000. Now, once they're all selected, press the program button. Now, for me, this one took a little longer than the last firmware that we loaded, but you must wait until you see a message at the bottom of the output log 
that says hard resetting via RTS pin. Now, if you don't wait and you do unplug it before it actually says that, there is a possibility you could actually brick or lock out your little receiver. If you do get to that stage, then you will need to open it up and power it on while holding the reset button. Okay, so that's done. Now let's take a look on the device itself. Now, the only place that I could see and confirm that the new firmware was loaded was actually the loading screen. As we can see here, it says version 1.01. .01. Although with this firmware from G8PTN, there is actually a visual difference on the main screen, and that's the removal of the scrolling frequency bar and the inclusion of an S meter, which should display the signal strength of any received stations. Now, I know I've only covered two firmware versions here, how to load them specifically, but let me know down in the comments which firmware you think is best. I'm sure there must be more out there that we can try. So let us all know about them. Leave a link in the comments and I'll check them out. Anyway, guys, hope you found that useful. You can obviously use this procedure to give your SI4732 a fresh new look if you've got an older version. Don't forget there is actually newer hardware available now, so maybe you want to think about upgrading to one of the latest hardware versions anyway. But even still, they might come with an older firmware version. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.